Woo! I should have wore a hat. Man. You know, I, I had something else prepared like a couple weeks ago for today, and I, I was notified by my boss, the one we're all here to worship today, to scrap it, move to something else. So I'm believing that he's got a plan with it, something greater than I had, so usually is, usually is. You know, I, I got thinking, as, as we put that, Sandy Spazzato took all those pictures, by the way. She did a phenomenal job with that and, and provided the slideshow. All we had to do was put it in and go, so that was wonderful. But during that, and even during VBS, you know, it made me think about back to my childhood, and I never enjoyed VBS when I was a kid. I would have, I would have enjoyed that. That would have been cool. But uh, I, wasn't, I didn't understand who God was. I mean, I could go into all the background of, you know, the father issues, the this, this, and that. It's not important right now. What, what I lacked was I didn't understand how I could get, how could I attain the, the affection of God? That's all I really wanted. Isn't that all a child wants is the affection of their father, of their mother, of their siblings? Isn't that what we want? I mean, it's funny, we're talking about affection this morning. I didn't expect to go that route, but that's, isn't that what we want? That's all I ever wanted as a child. It wasn't really focused on the obedience part, but I wanted the affection. And even in our walk, as, as accepting Christ, sometimes the obedience isn't there. But the desire for the affection draws you into obedience. Now, I wanted to start this morning in Romans 5.1. There's not much to this, but yet there's a lot of meat to it. Therefore, having been justified by faith... We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you write that down and stare at that, there is so much meat in that one sentence that if you gasped, grabbed hold of that and attained to that, what you could do with that knowledge and that understanding that God gives us through this scripture can change your life. It does change your life, actually. It can change your walk. Justified. Faith. Peace, but not just any peace. Peace with God and peace of God. Isn't that what we all desired? I know that's what I desired in my life. But what I had under, I had a hard time coming when I came into the presence of the Lord was understanding what justified really meant. I know you can read a definition. I know you can read a scripture and you can, you can like I said, memorize it. But until you receive it deep inside you, it's just head knowledge. Because a lot of times I struggled in my early, in my in immaturity of Christianity. I, I thought to myself, I'd read these and I'd, yes, but I always felt that God maybe just tolerated me. And he loved other ones. That can be all, all can come from family, Okay. So what we bring into this family, we bring all of our old baggage from our other family, and we come here, and we have to learn to let go of that baggage, and we have to learn to take hold of what God's got. In fact, we need to take hold of that which has taken hold of us. Now, in the Greek, justification means this. It means to be legally cleared of all charges against you. So if I read that scripture verse again, it says, Therefore, have you been legally cleared of all charges against you? I have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's still, I mean, that's a powerful scripture. But it's like, I don't get how you do it. And that's part of the other part there, the humanity part. The, we want to understand how he could do that. How can you possibly just clear everything? Is he unjust? Did somebody bribe him? Maybe somebody bribed God. He just let my stuff go through? I, I always envisioned God standing a courtroom, and God opening that up, and there's my name, and him just, oh, that ain't looking good. Isn't that how we think? I mean, honestly, isn't that how we think? Every one of us has sinned, so we'd all be, if we were all in the courtroom together, we'd all be sitting in the back going, I'm just dead. It's nice knowing you, man. I'll, uh, you know, but what's odd is that God says that 
it's, it's cleared legally. And I don't understand that coming into the faith. I don't understand how you just wipe all that away. Are we sweeping it under the rug? Is that what we're doing? God just forgets about it? And so I, you set out like, like as you were as a child before I knew him, trying to please God in a way of my own, trying to please your parents in a way of your own, and then you come into the faith family and you carry that through with you and you try to work for God and please him in a manner that you think seems fit. And it doesn't work because it doesn't fit. It's really hard. I've met a lot of people who just really struggle either on one side where they just feel like they never measure up because of, you know, they, I just don't measure up, I don't do enough. I've met other people where something bad happened to them and they can't believe that God did this after all I've done for him. That's always an interesting one. Really? After all you're, he's done for you? You've done for him? Well, you and I all had charges that were proven true. Every one of us. That's what I love about the church is that it levels the playing field. There's not one person who's above another here. It could be political. We could have a business. We could have this money. You could have clout. You could have influence. You could have a family name. There's no difference between you and me in the eyes of God. And when we come to understand that, we can start to let our walls down and show affection to one another as well. But right now we're talking about the affection towards God. How do we do this? How, do, how does that, how am I cleared of everything I did? Because I'm going to tell you, I don't even remember everything I did, but the one, things I do remember, hmm, not good. What are you laughing about? You got things, I know things about you too. <laughs> we aren't converted into righteous people just because we did something. It isn't like, okay, Steve, you did this, and you did this, you're righteous. I'm converted into being righteous because of the work of Christ. And so when I put that in perspective, all my life before, trying to get God to take a look at me, look at me over here, doing all these wonderful things. Look at, somebody sneezed, I said, bless you. I opened the door for someone. <gasps> I'm on my way to heaven. God isn't impressed with your works. He's not impressed with any of us in that manner. I was look when I started to notice is that God was always looking to Christ and Christ was looking to me. And so when Christ said, I, I still remember the day we were having problems. I was having problems in our marriage. It was Julie. It wasn't me. So I just want to let you know that. Okay, that was still part of the problem even then, but I'm just joking about it now. I remember sitting in the counselor's office. We went to a marriage counselor because we it was that or kill each other. And he asked us this. He asked a, a very simplistic question, and it was it, very simplistic. He said, do you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Now, I heard all that stuff. I grew up in the church. And was, uh, that's, uh, that's the problem. It was just, uh, that's, uh. But today, that day, it wasn't anything special about him or the way he said it. I was at the end of the rope. Julie as well. We both accepted Christ at the same day. But I can only say what was going on inside this person's body. What was happening in my mind, in my heart. I felt like I was going to jump out of my skin across the table and jump on him and love on him. Does that make sense? There was an excitement today when he asked me that, that I could feel something here. Now, it says this in Ephesians 2, in verse 8. It says, for by grace you've been saved through faith. I was sensing that grace that I had never felt before. He was just a theory. He was just a great God that they talk about. He was just a story in a book who would never accept me for who I was. But on that day, he broke through something in my mind and got into my heart, and I sensed something inside me. And it wasn't emotionalism. It's not sensationalism. He was doing a work inside me that had never been done before, and I could sense it, and I wanted it. And so I said to him, yes, and so did Julie. Pretty simple question. For grace you've been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. 
It's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. The funny thing is this about this, okay? I want to give a backstory. I don't even know if you remember this. About six months before this date, before we're sitting in front of a counselor and I'm jumping out of my skin, we were, it was sleep, we were sleeping, and I was having a dream. And I'm in the dream. I'm in the backyard where we, we, had a, we had a group of about eight houses. We all had one acre, and everything was, the backyards were all open, man. We had football. We had baseball. There was motocross. They, you know, every, that we just, the kids, we all had, we did a lot of stuff back there. And in my dream, I'm standing, I'm at the Shermans, which you don't know them, but I'll let you know their names. We're playing baseball. Yes! Love it. And I remember just playing shortstop and we're playing. And all of a sudden I could hear in my dream, I could look over towards my parents' house and I heard what was like, mom would listen to Family Life Radio. Anybody know where that is from Midland? You know, okay, there's just church music going. And in my dream, I could hear this music. And I'm like, why is mom cranking Family Life Radio? I'm like, we're, you know, we're all playing baseball. And all of a sudden I looked to the, to the side and I could see across the horizon a light and a, something coming up over the horizon. Now, I can't tell you what they look like, but I know they were like angels, okay? And in the second, I heard clear as day, are you ready? And I woke up from my sleep. And I could, all I could hear was that voice inside me. Are you ready? I knew I wasn't. And so what I did, I did what every guy did. I waited six months. <laughs> I don't know why. I, don't, I wasn't ready. I was ready today, though, on this day. Today was the day I received salvation. Today, and I didn't harden my heart on this day. And on this day, I received justification. And on this day, I didn't have to prove to God who I am. His son did it for us. And so as I, as I stand here now today, justified, I do not do works for entrance. You shouldn't do works for entrance. We begin our relationship with God as if we were Christ Jesus himself. Because when he opens that file, justified. Justified. Now the question is this. Here's the question. We're faced with the reality of being set free. Everybody wants to be free, don't we? We're Americans. We're free. Freedom. Right? And part of that can be a problem in America. Because <laughs> we're free, and I'm, not, I'm my own master. And so we're, it, it, but I'll tell you what, America or any nation, it's the same thing. There's one kingdom there's one. There's an earth down here. There's a kingdom. And when you entered into the family of God, you became subject to a kingdom that you cannot see, but you can sense. There were two freedoms that were presented to the Israelites back in Mount Sinai. It's the same freedoms that you and I make, make a choice every day. There was the freedom to do what you want, to live independently, Establish yourself as your own master. Even after you become, I'm talking about even if you accept the Lord. There are people who still, they want to just do what they want to do. I've done this, let's see. I've done that, I say, got saved, let's put that on the shelf. I'll do a little bit here, a little bit there, and God's, he's still talking to you. There's an expectation of us, church, every single one of us. Or there's the freedom to do what you should to bind yourself to God, to serve Him faithfully, not your pastors. You don't serve us. You don't even just serve each other in a way. You serve Him first, first and foremost. Why? Because Jesus Christ justified us. He made us righteous as He is. He took everything away that was dirty, unclean, unfit for heaven, for us to be able to stand directly in the presence of God. Jesus did that for you. Jesus did that for me. No crying today. Not going to cry. Now, have you ever read about Paul being a bond servant? Yes? Anyone? 
Okay, just making sure everyone's awake. I can't see you hardly, so the lights, so I'm just making sure you haven't walked out on me. That's a commitment. He wasn't a slave. He wasn't a bond slave. He was a bond servant. What he said is, I'm, as this is right here, the freedom to do what you should to bind yourself to God. It'd be no different than like they would make agreements. They would take their hand like this and the other person would like this and they'd put a binding around them to just signify, I'm bound to you. That's what we are doing with the Lord. That's what we should be doing with the Lord. I am committing my life to you. For you gave me life. All life comes from you. And it seems that many times in the church, people, maybe they don't understand that. Maybe people think that it's just by coming to be saved, you just are a better, a better you. <laughs> but God didn't give you Jesus to become a better you. The, better, the best you you could be. He gave you Jesus so you could be like him. And every one of us are called into imitate Christ. And Christ did what? I came to save, seek, and save the lost. I came to serve. Now, if the master came to serve, should we not feel the conviction of serving one another? Whether it's seen, unseen, known, unknown, doesn't God see everything we do? Shouldn't we love one another? We see a hole. Shouldn't you go and try to fill it? This takes faith. There's a Greek word for faith, too. It's always a Greek word. It's wonderful. They had a great language. Okay, it means this. If I'm going to receive his salvation, his justification, it took faith. When, I, when that counselor said to me, to Julie, do you want to accept him? And that was happening. God imparted faith because I didn't have a clue what to do. I'd been offered that before. And I didn't take it up. There wasn't, this guy didn't offer anything better. It's not like he was saying, got some coffee and some chips. <gasps> yeah, bonus. It wasn't, he didn't offer anything of that nature. He offered what was always offered. But today, Greek, a firm persuasion, that's Greek for faith, firm persuasion, convinced, thoroughly convinced, a surrender towards God. Whoa. A surrender which ushers in trust. Does that sound like your relationship with the Lord? If it isn't, don't feel condemned because you know what? Romans 8.1 says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's another good word. I can walk around knowing I'm not going to get smacked down later in life for, not, for what I did earlier in life. There's no condemnation. And you know what? It takes trust to believe there's no condemnation. It takes trust. That's why he imparts faith to us because you won't believe it on your own. Either will I. I couldn't believe it on my own. I could not believe that a just God who would do this would actually reach his hand out and take me in after what I'd done. So he had to impart faith to me to even believe that. There's nothing in my salvation that I can own other than my skin, and even that he gave to me. And even that he'll take from me someday. Faith is not a passive word. Faith is an aggressive, active word. It is not passive. Faith moves you to action. Faith without works is dead. Noah was moved by faith. Noah went out. He didn't get God to come to him every single morning. Hey, how's that boat going? Oh, so, oh I slept in. So, yeah, I'll get it going. He, every day. He got up, he cut, he, he did whatever he had to do to build that ark. He gathered. Faith did that. It moved him every day. It moved him. God gave him a word. It moved him. What's moving you? What moves you? Is he yelling at us? No, I'm just excited. <laughs> just to make sure. I'm not mad at anybody. Ephesians 2.10 tells us this. For we are his workmanship. 
created in Christ Jesus for good works. Oh, so we do do. We do good works. Yeah. Post-salvation. He says, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. How do we walk in them? We walk with the Holy Spirit. Walking with the Spirit of God, and he's calling us, go over and do this. Hey, there's something right there. Go give an encouraging word. I don't know what you function in. I know what God's given me to function in. So I'm just speaking what I do, whatever it is for you. Oh, they need a meal made. Well, that's so much less. Are you kidding me? If you're hungry and you make a meal and you bring it over and you give it to someone who's in need, you think that's less? Isn't that loving? Doesn't that reflect what God does, who God, out of the blue, gives us something? Isn't that reflecting the very heart of God by being giving of physical things? Every single one of us has a gift that, and, and works to do. But it's time to do them and function in them as he, properly, as, he's, as he saw fit. He says, I have something for you today. Okay? But we have to be listening to him every day, setting our affection on him every day. We learn to imitate Christ and love like him. Now, I brought up that no condemnation thing. You know, sometimes even in the church, we look at other people outside the church. We have to remind ourselves that there's no condemnation towards us. We have no we have no, no authority, and we should never be condemning others either, whether it's through word or through your thought. Let me read something. The difference between standing condemned before God or being free from condemnation before him is not whether one is bad or one is good, but whether one is reliant upon self or whether they are reliant upon God. You shed condemnation, not because of you. I don't condemn. I'm not condemned. I'm not going to condemn others, not because I'm so holy, but because my condemnation file was closed, thrown. Don't condemn others. Can you imagine what we can do in our communities when we see people who have already been condemned by others in the church and we show love? Does that mean everybody's going to come running to you? No. What if we all start that today? What if today's the day? Faith towards God takes me off the throne of my heart. And that's where a lot of us have been. I have been. That's what I was prior. I wasn't a very good king either, just to let you know. Wasn't real good at making rules and standards and policies. But God's faith, what it does is I now look at him and Christ walks in and I set myself off that throne and I allow him on it and I, this is where we're found before God. This is what heart, this is what your heart should be. I submit to you now as a servant. We're all going to be a slave or a servant to something. You, you got to understand that. And so if God's calling you and calling me to be that, what holds you back? What's, what's your affection? Maybe you have a different affection. And sometimes we need to go and think about that and pray about that. Is there something distracting me? Is there something I've got my eyes set on that I thought was a was a more of an important thing than you? And if, I, and if you are, it's simple to do. Father, I repent of that, and I'm going to set you as my affection. Faith towards God takes me off the throne and allows the peace of Christ to rule within me. Isn't that what you want? That's what I wanted, peace. Peace with God and the peace of God. That's mine, and I ain't letting it go. It's yours, too. 
So many people struggle with anxiety and stress. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing special about me because I struggled with fear and anxiety for so many years. He took it away because I made him the affection of my heart. But I didn't even do the work. All he did was reveal himself who he was to me. And it's a, it's a no-brainer. Are you willing to walk with the Lord through your trials? Are you satisfied with being stressed out? I guess is that's my, my question to you. And you don't have to answer. I don't see anybody answering. Anybody want to answer? Are you satisfied with that? No. no. Don't you want to live in the peace that God has established for us? Well, can we possibly live in that with all the things? Jesus lived in peace, but everyone always has a problem with that one. He was God. No, he was fully man, just like you and I. And he was fully God. But then we watch all the apostles. They did the same thing because they learned of him. And they were filled with his Holy Spirit. There's nothing different about them than us. In fact, the book of Acts is the only book that has no ending. It's still continuing. That's you and I still writing the story. Trusting in him. If you want peace, then you've got to make war. And you've got to quit letting somebody else speak into your mind. You've got to quit talking about someone else and set your affections on God alone. I already know we have an enemy of our soul. We acknowledge that. I don't care what he's doing today. I care about what God's doing with me today. Because I'm going to spend eternity with him. How about you? I know the other one won't be anywhere around. The Greek have a word for peace, too. Isn't that funny? They got it. I'm just telling you, they are the darndest people. I love them. It means the harmonized relationship between God and man. I love that. Accomplished through the gospel. So I might as well say the harmonized relationship between God and man accomplished through Jesus Christ. And we've already established what? What did I establish at the beginning? I am justified because, and you're justified because, if you've accepted him at his terms, who are you justified by? Yeah. And God looks at us in the file and he sees who? <laughs> That's our relationship, folks. What I was looking for as a boy and couldn't find, I found as a man because God revealed it to me. I don't know what you've been looking for. Maybe you've already found it. Share that with someone. This should give the potential of evangelism bursting out of you. What can they do to you? But I'm so scared to talk about the Lord. You don't have to be scared about talk about the Lord. Pray for boldness. If you lack, pray for boldness. The harmonized relationship between God and man accomplished through the gospel, but also having a sense of rest and contentment, having a sense of rest. Do you feel rested? Or are you, you know, I'm not talking about just the physical, we're talking about inside. Remember how I told you like that little thing, right? As he sent his grace, I could feel it. You can sense God's peace within you. You don't have to be all shaken up. I'm hyper, okay? I'm a very hyper person. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking in the depths of my soul. I am peaceful. And it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. See, that's the good news, people. You don't have to earn it. You just got to come get it. Believe in it. God's given you the grace. He's given you the faith. He's given us Jesus. You are justified because of him. If you've called on his name, if you've confessed with your mouth and you believe in your heart, you have established just what I'm preaching on today. What holds you back? Go and get that, what, that affection you're looking for. Give the affection you want to give. Let's be the church.
Ah, oh, getting me all excited. Last week, if you were here, Marcus Patillo gave a great message. Was you here? I hope I said his last name right because I screw last names up all the time. It's close enough. You know who I'm talking about. Marcus was here and he had a, he had a message. It was good. There was something that struck, st stood out to me. I mentioned it last week, but I'm going to mention it again. Is that men live in a state of unrest in the presence of God. And I see that a lot in the church. You don't have to. You know, I don't want you to believe just what I say. That's, that's not, don't believe, take my word for it. Take the word that I'm giving you and go home and pray about it. Research it. Is this guy a nut? Probably am. Yes, I am. But I'm a holy nut. And I believe in something. Okay? I'm a nut that's been cracked wide open. The world's looking for a man to bring peace. And they're going to find it. I'm going to tell you right now. The world is going to find their peacemaker. And it's going to be within the Antichrist. It's coming. I'm not telling you which day. But that's what the world's looking at. What are you looking at? As followers of Christ, we already have an eternal peace with God. It's already here. It's already established. Ephesians 2, it says, For he himself is our peace. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you allowed him to into the throne room of your own heart, you have a peace that surpasses understanding. You don't have to understand it. You need to walk in it and utilize it. You need to pray about it. You need to rejoice about it. You need to worship and in it. Are you with me? Oh, here comes all the cuties. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray now, okay? So I want to pray, but I want to speak this scripture over you as a blessing included in the prayer. It's from 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. So Father, we're just thanking you for this morning. We're thanking you for the worship that looks to you. We're thanking you for the word that speaks of you. We're thanking you for the promises that you've made. No, little, no small promise. Oh, God, through your faith, we receive every promise that you made. We just give you praise today, Father. And I pray for those who haven't opened their heart fully to him, who have used their freedom to allow themselves to lead themselves. I pray that today they would learn to submit to you, just to bow down, just to bend the knee, step off the throne, let him sit where he needs to be, to not be afraid to not be afraid to let God lead your life. Seek his affection every day in all things. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Let's stand. <clears throat>